All right, so building has always been for nice bread and butter. When you think of a skilled player, all right, you usually think of one that utilizes builds and edits at lightning speed, or the pro player with those smart builds that instantly change the outcome of a 1v1. That's because the skill ceiling on building mechanics is just so high compared to the other aspects of the game. Watch any top player, and you're gonna see them deploy those skills and dominate their opponents. The question of who are the best builders? You know what, that's had multiple different answers depending on what time you've asked it. For instance, in the game's early stages, many said Myth was the top builder in the world, and he definitely might have been during the beginning period. But mechanics evolved, players trained to get better and innovate their techniques. As a result, well, sometimes we see players who once thought were good at building slowly just fall off. Then others just come out of nowhere and take their place. What's up, guys? This is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. And Keith Allen's my first name. Please stop calling me Mr. Allen. Make me feel like I'm like 70 years old. Anyways, this video is all about the builders you should be watching in Season X. And uh, if you haven't connected with me on my Instagram, you are missing out. Make sure you do so as soon as possible. Well, before we get started, Pro Guys has a small announcement to make. We are adding a ton of new features to our site, which include one, exclusive guide videos for our pro members every single day, all right? Two, Pro Pass now grants access to all games, such as League of Legends, Smash Brothers, CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you are a pro member. So head on over to Pro Guys by clicking the link in the description below. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, coming up first, this man needs no introduction. There's a reason people say an earthquake follows Mongrel wherever he plays. His low sensitivity, combined with his exuberant playstyle, means he has to move his mouse at a ridiculous pace to pull off these moves. Seriously. Yo, this is crazy. I mean, I don't even understand how he doesn't break his hand. Like, he's moving that fast. Do you lose track of what he's doing when you watch him, or am I the only one that does? If I am, it's okay. I don't feel bad. It's like his gameplay is just sped up almost, right? So here's a recent random game of Mongrel for you to check this out. It was just a regular squad match, but it's a great example of how fast and effective building mechanics can keep you alive. Mongrel's the last one alive on his team, and he's lacking heals to get back to full health. With a bunch of players surrounding him, he goes into box fighting mode. This is a great position to default to when things aren't going your way. If you play it right, hey, you can outmaneuver opponents to get a limbs while keeping yourself protected from any third parties. You often see Mongrel and other top builders try to place their own ramp piece in their opponent's box. Haha. <laughs> That's because controlling building pieces is vital when it comes to successful box fighting. You see Mongo do this here, but his opponent was ready with a shotgun out. Down to 1 HP, this is where he starts playing out of this world. The first thing Mongo does here to avoid getting hit is to stay on the move. He edits out, builds up, edits back down, and even goes back inside his old structures. Your opponent can't hit you if they can't keep track of your position, which is why staying on the move can be so important in a build battle. You need good awareness, guys, yourself to keep avoiding to run into an enemy. But it's usually a lot better on the move than staying still. Okay, so look at this elimination here. Check this out. Mongrel surprises an opponent and he lands the first shot. Rather than just play it risky and go for more shots, he knows that building a wall for cover is what's going to keep him alive. Then he edits out a floor, cone, puts a wall up so his opponent can't block him, edits out of that, and then drops on the guy who still hasn't taken down a single metal wall in the time Mongrel does all of that. The raw speed of these builds and edits is just completely insane, and it is part of what allows this guy to make this clutch play. Okay, so it's the end of the game, and Mongrel finds himself in a 1v1 situation. He doesn't have height, but is still able to retake it without so much of a scratch. So how does this guy do it? Other than his supersonic speed, he always makes sure to build cover above him and to the sides when he's going up to height. If somebody has height on you, they're going to be looking for shots, so you always need to make sure you're building cover, whether it's a floor, a cone, or ramp. You can see that with almost every stationary jump up, he makes sure to quickly put a floor or cone above him as well. Eventually, Mongo takes the high ground successfully. Then he just toys with the last guy before finishing him off for the 1 HP comeback win. Wow! He takes his first shot ever since getting down to 1 health right there at the end. Whew! And it's only because Mongo let it. So, using a controller is usually thought to be inferior to keyboard and mouse, right? Especially when it comes to building. After getting second place in the dual World Cup Finals, Wolfie showed the world that playing with a controller doesn't mean you can't keep up mechanically. While he's not necessarily better at building than a lot of the top pros, the fact that he plays on a controller deserves some attention. You do not become a top builder without first putting in the hours. 
Take a look at how Woofies warms up. This is crazy. He wasn't doing so hot in his arena game, so he decided to take a break and he headed into creative to warm up his skills. He spends the next 50 minutes practicing a variety of things like high ground retakes, tunneling, and editing. That dedication is part of what has made this guy so successful. While they're definitely top notch, Wolf's building mechanics are somewhat limited due to playing on a controller, right? So don't take it the wrong way, he does have some insane mechanics, he really does. But control sticks just do not move as fast or as consistently as a mouse, obviously, which can lead to slower builds and edits. So from what we've seen, he makes up for this by using clever building techniques that catch his opponents off guard. Like this ramp fake out used to grab attention, <laughs> or how he based these two guys into his box, only to trap kill them. Not only that, but you know, he seems very tactical when it comes to building. He doesn't always go for really flashy builds or edits, but you know, a lot of the time he'll instead play it slow and he'll wait for the right moment to strike. His results at the World Cup show that slower and more methodical play can just work out even at the highest level of competition. Out of eight controller players, all right, at the World Cup, Wolfies performed the best and almost even took home the first place prize with his partner Royo. A large part of his success is likely due to how he chooses to build. So, if you're a controller player and you're looking for someone to emulate, this is your guy, all right? You wanna learn from him. Dubs, yeah, probably has one of the best comeback stories in competitive Fortnite so far. He was accused of cheating when he first started winning events back in April, remember that? <laughs> a bunch of pros jumped at the opportunity to call him out, but it turned out that the so-called evidence was fake, deep. For anybody who analyzed Dubs back then to see if he was cheating, it was obvious from the start he wasn't. Dubs was getting most of his points through placements during the qualifiers, right? Not by running around and just killing everybody with aim cheats or anything. You know, another important thing is that he really, really was proficient in building. You know, there aren't really any cheats that can just help you build better. So by looking at that alone, you could tell that he wasn't cheating. Instead, he was just a nutty player. And by bringing home a respectable 15th place in New York, may I add, he dispelled any rumors once and for all. Okay, so check out this high ground retake here. Okay, so he edits through his floor in a cone, attaches two ramps, edits through a floor, then another floor and a cone. On that one, he attaches a cone, changes the edit of the previous cone, and goes through another cone. He takes height on this dude and is now waiting for him up top. From here, he gets the structures and he edits for the LM. Nice. So, there are two big reasons why pro players do complex retakes instead of just cranking 90s or ramping up. First, the extra build pieces provide cover. If you are retaking high ground, you need to assume your opponent is going to be looking for shots, right? All the extra cones, walls, and floors, you know, they help keep you protected while you build up. Second, complex retakes can confuse your opponent as to your position. You don't want to box straight upwards or keep ramping in the same direction, right? That gives opponents time to react and then position accordingly and look for shots. If you instead change directions while building up, your opponent is going to find out where you went, then reposition themselves for a better angle. All right, so we're gonna leave you guys with a short clip of Dub securing the match's final kills in a Fortnite Friday event. Check it out. Clicks is a player who first started to get known for his building skills. Yes, his ping was really low and it gives him an advantage when he plays online. But if you watch him play at all, you're going to know that that's only a small part of it. This guy is still insanely fast and efficient when it comes to builds and edits. If you're wondering just how good of a builder he is, he recently won a 1v1 creative tournament called Wednesday Wagers. In it, he beat out the likes of Ghost Aiden, FaZe Dubs, and then FaZe Sway in the finals to grab the first place prize. All right, all right, so what makes Click such a good builder? <laughs> well, one thing he does extremely well is pressure players inside the box. Anytime he manages to take a wall from somebody, he flawlessly performs an edit and he goes for the shot. Not just any edit though, edits that like minimize his chance of getting hit in return. Usually, these are the ones that open up right side angle for him to peek with. 
right side peaks are advantageous in many ways, but the main one is that, you know, you could just shoot sooner and before barely revealing most of your body. If you peek that way, your foes will have a much harder time retaliating. After each shot, hey, you want to reset your position so you can peek them again in the same way. All right, so here's a clip that showcases this just from a couple months ago. He first replaces the wall. As he edits a window, he gets in the corner so he can avoid getting hit. Then he peeks to the right and shoots. His opponent tries to shoot back, but since he peeked like this, the window of opportunity was too short for him. It's a simple move, but Clicks has nearly perfected it. This list wasn't meant to be ranked, okay? But if we had to give a number one spot, this shouldn't even really come to a surprise to you. This is the 16-year-old everybody has been talking about. Booga, yeah. Ever since his dominating performance at the World Cup Finals, the eyes of the Fortnite community have been fixated on his gameplay. And by watching him play, you can really tell this guy is on a whole nother level. He lives up to the hype, guys. He really, really does, especially when watching his builds. All right, so his building and editing are not only like ridiculously fast, but they are all super efficient as well. He rarely messes up his edits and he just makes everything just look so natural and so smooth. When he goes for shots, he immediately just builds cover, editing through it to land more shots. It's like the Tifu classic, except he does it with every build piece. When you compare Booga's gameplay to the other pros, you just start to understand how he won the World Cup with such a sizable lead. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at one of Booga's high ground retakes. Shout out to Reddit user JakePatriots11 for performing it and making a slowed version detailing Booga's high ground retake method. We'll play that for you so you can follow along more easily. Okay, so probably the most important aspect of what makes Booga the top builder in the world is his structure placement. He places bills that don't even seem necessary, often before he even goes for a shot. But placing those bills makes it so his opponent can't even do the same. When you control the structures in a fight, you open up so many more opportunities. Through control of structure edits, you end up setting the pace of the fight. At the speed, Booga does it. I mean, he basically is deleting the player by the time they're even wondering why they're surrounded by walls. Preemptively, building structures can essentially reduce the time to kill in a lot of scenarios. If there's one trait that's worth learning from Booga, it's to make sure to control structures. So when you compare pro player footage from a year ago to what they're doing today, oh my goodness, there's a huge difference. It almost seems like they've already reached the limit of what's possible, right? But that's definitely not the case. Players are no doubt only going to get better, and we're excited about that. Who knows how crazy the pros are going to be at building like 3, 6, or even 12 months down the line. This list might end up being completely different a year in the future, just like it was in the past. But as for now, most of us can surely agree with the players on this list. And if you don't, hey, just let us know in the comments who your picks are. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. And make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. We've got a lot going on here at ProGuides.